Bar on the road. Blue tire. You got it, you got it. Good, go, go, go. This is Brian. I'm also Brian. His is pronounced with a Y. I'm sure you can hear the, the inflection there. Welcome to our video to recap the Silver State Classic 2021. Some guy approached me uh, four or five months before the actual kickoff of the race and says, Hey, I lost my co-driver, aka my wife, who doesn't want to drive to Nevada. Would you be interested? And I thought, mm, well, I don't know. I'll let you know. Then about an hour later, I said, I'm going. I've got to go to this. <laughs> Brian has a tell us about your car. Awesome. So I have a 2017 uh, Corvette Grand Sport model in, of course, racing red mm. with black racing stripes. Technically, torch red. So those of you who don't know that the Grand Sport is a Z06 package with a base model engine. So you know it's no slouch. 450 horsepower. <laughs> got the wide tires it's got the bigger brakes it's wide got body. the wider body you just don't have the supercharger and for those of us that like to drive it around on a day-to-day -day basis you get a smoother ride yeah uh than the than the z06 first off how many of these open road races are there in the nation now oh that's a great question uh actually there's three um, institutions or, or organizations that put them on. There's one out in Texas that runs the Big Bend Open Road Race. There's one in Nevada, the one that we did there, Silver State. And then there's an organization in Nebraska that runs Nebraska. Sandy Hills. And Brian has run all but Sandy Hills so far. So maybe someday. Silver State, they run one way, it's 90 miles. It's single way, head out, everyone stops. And then they you either wait there until they reopen the road and you can go back to Ely, Nevada, or you just do like we did and just park the, the tow vehicle south of there and then just head out. We headed out on a Sunday afternoon, 12, 1 o'clock, drove all through the night. We threw a sleeping pad and a sleeping bag and pillows and all that stuff in the back seat of my avalanche. He'd get tired, grab me, shake me, time to get up. I'd get in the seat, grab a cup of coffee. And we just made it as quick as we could. Beautiful drive for the most part, you know, other than New Mexico, beautiful roads. So <laughs> lost two center caps on those uh, nice, smooth, well-paved highways they have there. We got there, got a little bit of rest, not much sleep when we got there. <laughs> but we, uh, we got up and had some good health food at Denny's. <laughs> good old Denny's breakfast. That's, that's right. right. Boy, that was what we needed after. <laughs> After Denny's, 24 hours of nonstop driving. That's right. Denny's and more coffee. Just across the street, caddy corner from the hotel, is this parking area that they've designated. You could park your truck and trailer and all these tow rigs. I tell you, it was pretty neat to walk out and see some of those cars. Here we are. This is the parking lot for all the trailers. Some of the cars here. Got a cool one there, a Pantera. Italian built with Ford engine in it. Very cool car. And another Pantera, which that's like lightning striking twice in the same spot. Two Panteras in the same location. It was amazing yeah. to, to walk outside and see cars that, you know, you're like, wow. And they're going to drive that 90 miles at 100, 125, yeah. 140 miles an hour. Yeah. Know? You can also see we're a little outclassed on our tow vehicle. Got some pretty cool ones here, but that's okay. Ours does the job and it'll get us here. So there's all kinds of stuff that's racing. Here's that Pantera. Way cool car, very rare. Cool toter home here. When I hit the lotto, Maybe when I grow up, I'll get one of those. Triple axle stacker trailer. Fit two cars in that. And we had some nice neighbors with their motorhome here. 
their RV. Looks like they're packing up and getting ready to go. And then we got our humble little tow truck here. It did good, made it all the way out. Pretty exciting. And some guy here, he's trying to break into our place. Whoa, what are you doing? After just walking around, getting to know people, we had tech inspection and breakfast and it poured rain. I mean, just it changed weather so fast because it was nice and warm and just beautiful, clear skies, just like any high elevation desert town. And it poured and poured and poured. I'm talking it got cold where your coffee <laughs> wouldn't even stay warm. Yeah. Lord was good to us. All of a sudden, skies open up. It's nice and clear. It starts to warm up. Everyone gets their cars ready for the car show. Wipes off all the, the water spots. Yep. yep. And that's when we got to walk around, really get to know some people. It was fun. And we were on a uh, the local high school football field, yep. I believe, and it was just covered, covered with cars. Oh yeah. And they, yeah, they just had beautiful cars. Everyone's there to show it, show it all off, and get to see some just amazing cars that you may not see otherwise. Oh yeah. You're you're a custom built Studebaker. Oh, that thing was awesome. Yeah, custom-built Studebaker had a uh, big block Chevy in it, 4L80. And I tell you, this guy, this thing looked like almost something you'd see in the Munsters. All yeah. black, yeah. black interior, black exterior, just awesome-looking car. And it really caught my eye. The guy gets out of his car. He's got the leather jacket. Yeah. He's yeah. got yeah. the boots. I mean, he is just, he's the part. To the T, California guy, and I tell you, one of the coolest guys we met there, yep. talking about toting a gun in his little town in Northern California <laughs> yeah. and everything, and just just a neat guy. And he built this, and he built that, and he oh, fabricated yeah. this, and fa everything That's in right. that vehicle. He, uh, he had hand welded, hand created, That's riveted, right. you name it. That's right. Wasn't even a car builder. That's just what he just loves to do. Unbelievable. And then he starts telling us more about the car, and he runs it out of Bonneville. Yeah. In 200 plus mile an hour class, he changes the rear gear and just runs the snot out of it. So <laughs> it's cool to see this kind of stuff out there. And hopefully we'll see some of these people this year. It's 2023 now, so two years ago. Yeah, and, it, and, and anybody who's been to Ely, Nevada, it's a tiny little mining town. There's nothing there. There's two hotels that are casinos, one part store, which we're thankful for. So, yeah. Yeah. but the... Uh, whole premise of this race is kind of they open the whole town up and let you have let these racers just which we were we were kind of a bundle of nerves honestly you know <laughs> kind of out of our element and uh, we didn't do the cruise we kind of watched but we didn't do the cruise and they have a time attack which we didn't do which yep. we're doing this year if i got to drive it we're doing it this year so yeah if he lets me <laughs> but the evening after the race after the show we hop in the car and Brian says, let's hop on this course and let's just take a leisurely drive down the course. So we cruise down the course, you know, and then get to the very end, find out where we're going to park the tow vehicle so that we can leave it there. I think we brought the tow vehicle, didn't we? Yeah, we, yeah, it? we did. We had, yeah. we had never even driven the course. Yeah. So that was our first drive the night before the race. That's right. We drove it down, dropped the trailer and truck and said, okay, let's make our way back nice and easy. The C8 kind of made its big debut yep. there. This was uh, September of 2021, ton of C7s and C6s because uh, it's it's just a turnkey go car. Uh, there was some really cool that that Firebird that I drooled all over. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that thing was awesome. Then the guy with the uh, the Boss uh, 69 Mustang, you know, that he was worried about. Is he going to make the course? Because he <laughs> he started calculating out what kind of miles per gallon he's getting. And he realized, I don't know if my tank's big enough to make it through the race. Well, that's you what know? happens when you stand around with hot rodders and some hot rod engine builder says, well, do you have enough fuel capacity? And next thing you know, his eyes glazed back <laughs> over. And he was all nervous from that point <laughs> forward. <laughs> he was. He was. So I, I rained on a guy's parade, unfortunately. So it was just a question popped into my head. And those of you who know me know that uh, sometimes my filter doesn't work real well. So it just comes out. So that was that was fun talking to all these people. So I'm not sure how much Brian slept, but I slept on and off that night. Just just this is my first time doing anything like this. I've I've gone drag racing. I've done a little bit of circle track, dirt track, things of that sort. But this is my first like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna be on an open road. Who knows? You know they 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 have a 
uh, airplane, they fly over and make sure the road is clear and, you know, someone who drives it, you know, several times beforehand and they've got flaggers and all that, but it's still, it's a public road. There's animals, yeah. you know, they, there, there's farmers along there with cows and people are telling us stories about, yeah, there's a cow on the road and you get it over your radio that, uh, Hey, watch out on this turn at this mile marker. <laughs> you know, there's, there's livestock dead on the road and, <laughs> you know, just what you want it doing 160 miles an hour. Yep. 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 That was the first time for both of us. So that morning we show up, there's a little gas station just north of the, of the track. So we meet up at this gas station, get in the car. We're all gassed up. We're ready to go. And it's kind of cool. As you walk around, nobody's talking. There's no laughing. Everyone's pretty sober, the whole atmosphere. And I popped on my camera and all you could hear is just this cam chop and exhaust in the air. You know, it's really cool. It's a cool, crisp morning. What do you say? Say it's time to race. Let's get that trophy Let's first. Let's do race. it. Here we come. Let's do it. Boom. Boom. Yeah, everyone's getting their stuff ready and making sure some of these people with data loggers and crazy, it looks like a, a science experiment in the back <laughs> of their car with, the, you know, 10 different GPS devices yeah. that all talk because yeah. they're going to get it. And those guys, <laughs> they win it every time. Yeah. But we, we get ready. We get in the car. We start heading over to the start line. And then a lot of the cars... They didn't bring them to the show. They didn't bring them to anything. And all of a sudden, we see there's a Lambo. Right. You see some more CH. You start seeing these obscure cars. And I think I was a little still nervous because I didn't get a lot of them. But there was some obscure stuff there. Our class was 150. Yep. So I had been inching my way up out at Big Ben for the last five, six years and had worked my way up to 130, 135. And we had signed up for 135. And so when Brian and I ran through it, it was like, oh man, it's a lot straighter than we were expecting. Yeah. And it's like, well, he makes the infamous question, which begs to be asked, can we go any faster? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, absolutely, we sure can. Well, what can we go to? Well, in the class that my car is eligible for, uh, was 150 and it's just a simple checkbox on a form we're yeah. moving up to 150 so that's exactly what we did and the whole point was to go 90 miles at an average of 150.0 miles per hour yeah more of a technical race not just pedal to the metal yeah <laughs>
sounds like Bob. Four and a half miles. Here's the uh, speed check. Two. One and a half miles.
more seconds. through that section called the Narrows, and there are some turns, man. Right turn <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. You've got some G-forces playing there that you're yeah. kind of holding on as a driver going, 
hope those tires stick, you know, yep. and my navigator's just going over there, right turn, right turn, left turn, left turn, yeah. right turn. And yeah. I'm just thinking, oh man, hold on. Oh yeah. <laughs> hey. Hey.
I've got all of our notes as well when we went through the course and we're making notes. So I'm, I'm rattling all that off to him. So I'm most of the time, I'm not even looking out the windshield. Yeah. You know, at one point, we're cruising along, and it was, we get just almost to the narrows, the one real curvy section in there where there's some, some fairly technical turns. And I'm like, what's he doing? What's going on? And, he, you know, he's, why is he off the gas? And you can see it on that race render app where the throttle comes off, the brakes are blipping, you know, he's hitting the brakes. And he says, yellow flag, yellow flag. I don't see anything. And all of a sudden you start hearing stuff hitting the car. You know, it's rocks and, and you know, there's all this stuff hitting the car and you can see skid marks off to the left. And then you see skid marks off to the right and a, and a Corvette sitting there and he blew a tire. It's just a screen that tells you what your time is, what your target time is, and it would turn red or green with an up or a down arrow telling you you need to go faster, you need to go slower, and by how much. And I tell you, we were spot on. You can hear us talking at the end of this, and we're talking, you know, hey, let's, let's back it down, let's speed it up, and we get to the end, and I mean, literally, I, I'm glued to this thing. And I'm talking to Brian, and I'm like, you're there, you're there, okay, up, down, up, down. And I mean, literally, it's within a hundredth of a second. Yes. We get to the last quarter, maybe eighth of a mile, and this app has this feature that w when you get right to the end, it trues up its GPS signal. <laughs> so it's a glitch in the app, yeah. honestly. Yeah. And literally, we went from one hundredth of a second to seven tenths of a second, just click. And you could hear us at the end of the race. <laughs> yeah. It was just like, yes, we got it, we got it. Oh, silence. Good run. That throws me off when it did that. That's okay. That's okay. Good run. Good run. Try. Spot on at zero and then just jump. I know that That's whole GPS. That whole GPS thing. It it jumped. Eight point two miles to the gallon. like a lime green AMC classic. He made it. Only six cars off, but that's okay. He's here. Or excuse me. Seven. Yeah, it was 80 something degrees and with a race suit and everything. It's pretty hot. And this C5 Z06 comes barreling in bright yellow. And I mean, he's just billowing smoke <laughs> just billowing smoke this whole car was built nice he had nice suspension he had nice everything and anybody who's wanting to do this kind of stuff realize most cars and i'll talk tech here for a second you're going to run high rpm out on the road for you know three four seconds maybe i mean you're doing this for 35 40 minutes wide open throttle just to the floor you know four five six thousand rpm non-stop 
and an engine develops a lot of blow by. And I couldn't believe it when this guy popped his hood. He had an open breather right next to headers and it's just dumping oil. Smoke's billowing everywhere. Yeah. Everyone's like, fire, fire, fire. You can hear people in the background. Is that car on fire? You know, and, and I don't know if it's on the video or not, but I tell you, people were freaking out and the guy pops the hood and I'm looking, I'm like, that's yeah, just smoking from the header wrap. You know, you'd be all right. You know, and I was like, ah, oh, you don't have a catch can. And he's like, well, no, you know, so it's just those details. So if you guys ever plan on doing something like this, look at the details, you know, and think about that kind of type of stuff. Talk to somebody, you know, get on forums. There's forums out there. I've found out for all these races and talk to these people. For those not familiar, you can run that race up to 110 miles an hour with just your seatbelt and helmet, gloves, you know, jeans and a long sleeve shirt. So you're good to go from a tech perspective. Anybody who wants to do this race, you could take your Honda Civic out there, yeah. you know, as long as it's in good mechanical condition where you're going to be able to just beat on this thing at 110 miles an hour. Where else do you get that option? Appreciate you coming over to talk about it. Look forward to this year. Can't wait. That's awesome. right. Can't wait. Awesome. So you'll see Brian in future videos. Awesome. Thanks for helping me. Absolutely. Thanks for coming by. <laughs>